If you're thinking about joining EVE Online, you could uh, play for free. Your friend has personally invited you to play EVE Online through the recruitment program. You can play for free as an alpha pilot with an added bonus of 1 million skill points. Actually, that's uh, 20 days of training. So it's 20 days of training as a member's account without any benefits. So the 1 million skill points will help you get a lot further. I wish I knew about this before I started. And if uh, 20 days of free training wasn't enough, that would be able to get you into the battleship on the first day. Just crazy. You'd be able to do so much on day one with the 1 million skill points, but they also give you 50% off on your first month of membership. So if the $15 was expensive, maybe $7.50 isn't so expensive. Especially if we could find a way to Plex for free. So we pay the $7.50 and then we see if we can pay for the account just by playing the game. Plus you get uh, daily login gifts for the first 15 days you log in. And then um, if you want all of these amazing, amazing benefits, all you have to do is click the link in the description. And then I think you're also added to my friends list so you could talk to me and then maybe we could help each other out in the game that is EVE Online. All right, so we're not gonna so much go through the missions because uh, we already did that in the other playthroughs. I think we went through a bunch of the career agents for these and the other agents. So I think mostly we're just gonna focus on our skills. So we got the uh, shield command. Yeah, because in the basic uh, military career, so we're basically done, done the military career. We're on mission 10 of 10, so you just talk to these career agents, you'd uh, start a conversation with them, and then they'd uh, give you a job to do. So, how long has it been since we accepted this one? Okay, four or five, an hour and a half. Yeah, because we're rendering the other video, and then we're uh, trying to figure things out here. So basically, all we did was the military career path. So now, um, <clears throat> then they gave us a shield, so we had to learn a skill to be able to use the shield. So if we go to show info, cause we were going to try to fit that, it would say requirements, it requires a shield operation one. So then we'd right click this and we'd say view market details. Then you'd just be able to buy it from the station for 55,000. So after you buy that, you would learn the skill. So we could probably learn another skill. <clears throat> But basically, all of your modules are going to require skills to be able to use them. Now the Merlin's really good. We just got the two light uh, electron blasters and then the Gatling rail gun. So if the enemies just are a little bit farther away, we could use this one. And then this one just tears through enemies at close range. It's actually pretty good. And then we got the one MN afterburner. Then the civilian kinetic, kinetic shield that they gave us and the small shield booster one. But that's uh, pretty much all that we need. Oh, and then we got the override injector system. So they give us those for completing one of the military missions. So these things are going to increase your movement speed at the cost of cargo capacity. So this ship can hold 150. And then on the right here, if we click on navigation, well, it also shows uh, 365 mi or 356 miles per second. If we were to put the overdrives on, our cargo space would go down to 127, but our speed would go up to 393. And if we put both of them on, we would have a 108 cargo space, but we'd have a 429 movement speed, which is also increased by our afterburner. So this uh, Merlin, we're going to be able to go 925 miles per second. Pretty crazy. Uh, I don't think we needed anything else in the low slots. We had to learn a skill to use that one the stasis web of fire. I guess we could throw that on the Merlin, so that'll slow down the enemies. Within 10 yards, reduces target ship velocity by 50%. So here's what the Merlin's gonna look like after you're done. Now we'll just go through some of these settings on the left. We're just going through the settings to change the UI scaling. So I think usually it's pretty small, it's pretty hard to read everything, depending on your screen size maybe, but you could change how big everything appears. We like the highest one at 125%. And then for general settings, the transparency, it might be at like 50%. Maybe it makes it a little bit harder to read everything because you're looking at everything behind, but then maybe you need to see behind sometimes. But we usually just move transparency all the way to the left just so it's pure black in the window so we could uh, see what we're looking at. So the skills, we were going to train social. So if we go to the skills window, if we go into social, 
Uh, we could uh, right click on social, say view market details. This book only costs uh, 30,000. So we bought that book and we learned it. So you just double click it and then you buy one of them, buy it. So they're always gonna be sold by the vendors. There's always gonna be a whole bunch of them here. So you should uh, always be able to find this book. And then we went to negotiation. We went to view market details and we bought this book for 60,000. Then we're just training social up to level three and then negotiation up to level two. So if we uh, close this, we should be able to see more in the training queue. Yep. So we've got social two, social three, negotiation one, negotiation two. So those skills are going to be maxed. We also have the Caldari frigate. Also got the shield operation level one, right? That's the only one that we research shield operation one if we go to the scale history shield operation level one social level one so that's pretty much what our first day of trainings looks like we're gonna get a social it's going to give us a five percent bonus per level to npc standings which we could use really early on the first day negotiation skill at a agent negotiation five percent additional pay per level for agent missions so we could get that up to level two on a free account and then Caldari Frigate, we'll just get to level three. And then um, we should have some money to buy another skill. So we could go to Spaceship Command, have prerequisites for uh, Caldari Frigate. If we train this to level three, if we go to show info, we could go to required for, and then uh, unlocks the ships of course. But if we go to the second one, it unlocks the uh, Navy ships. And then level three, it unlocks a skill. It unlocks the Kaldari Destroyer skill. So we could click on the eye here and it would show the information. It would unlock these ships. So we could go down to the bottom here and click on view market details to buy the Kaldari Destroyer skill probably. So we have uh, 2.4 million, so it costs 100,000. So we double click it to buy the Kaldari Destroyer skill. And we could go to our inventory, then we go to Caldari Destroyer in our inventory. And then we hover over it, and then the inject skill comes up. So it's gonna say required skills takes 15 hours to train because we need Caldari Frigate level 3 to be able to use it. So we could actually inject that skill. Caldari Destroyer. So now we could actually add that to the queue. Well, once we train these things, we just, uh, you can only add one day of queue to the time, so we could actually come back here in three hours. Or no, we could add it up before Caldari Frigate level three, that's right. Or no, we can't because it requires it. Okay, so there's the skill training queue, there's what skills we're training. And then because you probably signed up, um, signed up and got referred by somebody, hopefully you got the one million skill points, so on the left here it says you have unclaimed items in your redemption queue so redeem items 1 million skill points reward perfect okay so it should be redeem these selected items uh, this will redeem and directly inject 1 million skill points to sky dragon are you sure you want to proceed and then if you click the yes button then we should have a 1 million okay amazing now we have a 1 million and 25,000 unallocated skill points perfect and then uh, you have unclaimed items in your redemption queue. All right, so we already claimed that one. And then down at left here, daily login campaigns. So when you log in, you can collect rewards on each of the first 15 unit unique days that you log in. Daily starter gifts, so they give you 10,000 ISK and, uh, bonus skill points as you log in more. Once the bar is full, these skill points will be delivered to your redeeming queue. All right, so you get another 10,000 skill points uh, just for logging in every day. So we could claim the 10,000 ISK, that's today's gift. Uh, if new items redeemed, interstellar credits. Oh, and then that goes up, cool. Day two defense ship module. This uh, crate contains a defensive ship module appropriate for use on your factions, frigates, and destroyers. Cool, day three. Uh, one time starter gift cerebral accelerator. This booster will speed up your character's skill training for 48 hours. Okay, so we should probably save that. Save that just in case you get a member's account or something. Unless it's only usable on a free account. Then you get more ISK and then you get a frigate class starter uh, starship. 
oh cool, then you get a frigate skin, then you get a fireworks package, and then there's probably more things, but next gift is in uh, 4 hours and 7 minutes. So whenever the server restarts then, alright perfect, so there's the daily gifts, we looked at that. With one claimed items in your queue, interstellar credits 10,000, so we could redeem the selected items. Well, I should just go to our wallet, alright. And then uh, there's something else over here. A new offer, time limited offer available. Get 30 days of Omega, all ships, all skills, and faster training. 50% off. Uh, one day, 22 hours remaining. 748 instead of 1495. See? That's why we should have made this account and looked into it before, before I started the account. That's why we're doing this second series, because uh, I paid. They gave me a discount. They said if you sign up for three months, you could uh, save $6. But. Apparently, if you sign up and you refer a friend, they give you even more bonuses and they give you uh, 30 days for $7.50. So we could buy that right now. Um, so we could do that within two days, I guess. So we might as well get the membership then. We'll say $7.50. You got 1 million skill points. You get one members of one month of memberships. Can you get a. Can you plex yourself in one month of memberships with 1 million skill points on $7.50? Maybe. Alright, we figured it out. So you have to go to the EVE website. So it's like EVEonline.com. And then you log into your account on the top right, right? You'd uh, log into your account and then you go to game time. Except you wouldn't click on uh, upgrade to Omega. Because this would just bring you the regular thing. One month, $15. So on the top right you can see offers. So we had trouble figuring this out, so maybe we're recording this. Limited time offer available until 19th of November. 50% off one month. So available until the 19th, so we could buy this. Alright, well that had just happened. They just took my $7.50. Upgrade successful. But we do have membership for one month on this account. So current clone state Omega. Selection of 354 unique ships to fly. Train any of 446 skills to maximum level. Train at two times the speed. Exclusive uh, ship piloting. So click the continue. So in three hours we get our daily starter gift. And now we're actually a member. So just amazing how they took the money so quick. So now our skills are going to be training. Because look, it said it was going to take uh, one day and three hours. Now the training time only says uh, 13 hours. Plus we have our uh, 1 million skill points because we were referred by a friend. That's absolutely amazing. This is going to give us uh, so much potential. Especially since everything's training at double speed now. So we have the social skill training. Oh, and then uh, we could get uh, higher social skills too. We could train them to level 3 if we wanted to. So many possibilities just opened up. So we could start training the Kaldari Frigate to level 3. And then we could train the Kaldari Destroyer. So we already bought this book. We could actually add it to the queue. So we could add uh, twice as many things on the queue now. Well, I mean like um, for the day. Like uh, if we queued up one day, essentially it would have taken us two days to train that if we weren't a member. So this would have taken like 44 hours to train. So we could say definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Everything all came together. So I would say you would just try to uh, go for your ship skills probably. You want to try to get the social, social level 3 and then the negotiate. Uh, negotiation to level two that's perfectly fine for now that'll take like four five five and a half hours six hours to train or something but then when you're doing missions for agents they're gonna give you more reputation and they're gonna give you a uh, higher pay as well so we might as well just put a uh, social level three on so you can't actually get negotiation level three as a free to play but the very first things that we'll put on as these skills will be the social skills then and then once those are upgraded, we'll just go straight for the straight for the battleship. So I think we're going to save these skills, right? There's absolutely absolutely no reason to use these skills. So we could say tomorrow we're gonna be able to fly the destroyer. And then if we go to spaceship command, we could actually go to Kaldari Destroyer. Since it's uh, trained up to level three on the skill tab, we could see skills unlocked, Kaldari Cruiser, we could click on information. We could go to view market details. So the cruiser is going to be a super sick ship. 
since we already did wow we already have like over two million and the only missions we did was the military career agents so we could definitely afford the caldera cruiser so it's a one million dollars so we double click it then we click on buy the caldera cruiser scale then we go down to our inventory then we could uh, inject the caldera cruiser scale requires destroyer level 3 16 hours to train perfect so now if we go to our training queue we could just uh, add caldera cruiser down there so it's just uh, 42 minutes to train it to level 1 and caldera cruiser level 2 so we could just uh, queue up everything and keep in mind, right, the 1 million skill points counts as 20 days, so if we really, really, really wanted to, we could uh, train this all right now instantly because of all the crazy benefits they give. So, Caldari Battle Cruiser. So, every, uh, every new ship that you unlock is going to require level 3 of the previous skill. So, that's 100% free to play. You could definitely get the Battle Cruiser up to level three i know we've seen that before so we can see how much this skill books i think it's uh 2.5 million right we'll look at these ships later so all we have to do is do some more missions for these people so we could just um leave it at uh the 10th out of the 10th one right we're not going to do this one yet we're going to save it so it looks like um if we go to agents, the agency on the left hand side, if we go to agents and missions, um, career agents, will it show when it expires or something? Yeah, we're not sure when it expires. We could come back to him uh, any time to complete the mission. That's right, we completed the other ones. So if it has been offered, maybe we could come back. So we started the industry career path. We did the first mission. While we accepted the first mission, we have uh, three hours to complete it now. So basic combat, we weren't going to really cover that too much. We already did before. We'll do a little bit of basic combat in the advanced military. So considering we already started this, we'll just do industry for right now. So it says we have to go mine 1,000 Valdespar, granted items one times minor. And that give you a whole bunch of money and reputation. So, oh, so we accepted this mission already. So all we would need would be to fit something with a miner. So if we go to ship fitting, we're going to keep the Merlin as the fighting ship. So maybe we'll just use the Corvette here. So, if you double click on the ship, you could uh, switch which ship you're piloting. So, we could uh, ungroup all of the weapons. So, we're gonna need uh, one miner. Or we could just put it on the Merlin. What are we talking about? We could just uh, leave this thing how it is. We could go to ship hangar. We could go to the Merlin. Now, we could uh, switch out guns. So, the Merlin is gonna have one more weapon slot than that. Uh, in the Corvette so we can ungroup all weapons by clicking on this uh, unlimited symbol by the weapons. And then we can take on the take off the long range weapon. So uh, when we're actually using this in combat those uh, close range guns they're super sick. I mean you have to get close to the enemy but uh, they do ridiculous damage when you actually hit the enemy. So we can pretty much um, empty the Merlin's inventory. I don't think we... Well, we could bring some ammunition charges. We just need the antimatter and the iron charges mainly. We could probably buy some from the market. Or we could make some. They do give uh, blueprints here. That's right. We could make our own ammunition. So, for the industry... Let's just fit our ship with the miner then. So, we put the miner on our Merlin. So we'll undock. So maybe we'll say, we'll just go out there and start mining and then we'll maybe come back if something else comes up because we're just going to be doing the industry path. We don't want a big, huge, long let's play. This is supposed to be a quick let's play. So for the missions on the left hand side, you could usually find where to go. You could uh, warp to the location. You could click the button if you're on a mission or it'd say set the destination and then you might have to jump some stargates so we'll figure out how to jump through stargates while well, the delivery missions they send you through stargates so basically mining i guess wouldn't actually be too bad for a first character maybe it wouldn't be especially since they let you train everything so early so 
As soon as you get here, there's going to be some Valdezwar. So on the right hand in the overview, you could uh, change it from general to mining. You could see there's one Valdezwar here. So we could just uh, we could press the control button to lock onto it, or we could hold the mouse button and lock onto it. But we could use the miner, so we have to be within 10 kilometers of the rock. So it's basically this thing's going to give us uh, minerals every 60 seconds. So every one minute when we're mining the Valdespar, it's going to give us 46 M3 per 60 seconds. And then our inventory is going to fill up because all of our ships have a cargo hold. So once our cargo hold is full, maybe we could just return to the station. Probably won't take too long to fill it up. Oh, so we are in the Merlin. All right. So we don't have too much inventory space because we got the override injectors, which uh, increase our movement speed, which is uh, actually really good. So you sit here, and then when the cycle is completed, you're going to see your Valdespar go into your ship's inventory. Or if you wanted to deactivate the miner sooner, if you were just warping out somewhere. So another good thing to do would be here is the station. There's only uh, one station, so he's going to say good job, bring him uh, 1,000 units of Valdespar. So we might not even be able to carry that much. So here is the overview, here's the stations, here's the stargates, that's what those look like, stargates, stations. So the station, you could right click it and say, well, you could uh, maybe hold the left mouse button. So there's a dock, marked with and show info, align to, oh okay, yeah, so you just hold the left mouse button, go to the, go to the circle menu, and then in the bottom left it would be align to, and then you could uh, stop your ship. So that just basically faces your ship towards the station, so when you had to make a getaway, then you could left click and say dock to the station, and then your ship should fly away right away. And then if you wanted to deactivate the miner early, you could just click on the miner, then you could uh, click on the miner to activate it again. So these shield modules, they're gonna help you. This one gives you kinetic damage resistance bonus, so if you find enemies doing kinetic damage, to help you resist against them. So we stopped the miner because their inventory is basically full. Uh, it would be nice to get the 1000 Valdespar if we could, if we have enough inventory space. So maybe we'll actually just get 1038 Valdespar. So even with this setting, the Merlin was able to get one inventory. And then the second mission will tell you to refine the Valdespar. So he'll give you a rewards of a new ship. So this is going to be your first mining ship. Plus it gives you more money. So you hit the accept button. And then all you have to do is go to the left hand side to your inventory. And then you just uh, trade the Valdespar to the item hanger. So I guess we don't have any Valdespar. We need to figure out how to get Tritanium. So the rewards of the venture, we're not going to bother mining it, so we could right click on the Tritanium, say view market details. So I think we need quite a bit, so we could click on this arrow to sort by the price and see, uh, it looked pretty expensive in this station, right? Oh no, there was uh, one for 6 ISK, that's alright. So I do know that we need like 10,000 of it, right? So we go 10,000, 10,000 Tritanium, we're going to need it, it'll cost 60,000 ISK. So we could buy that, and then it, uh, everything that we buy from the market, it's going to go in the station hangar of the station that you bought it at. So here is our 10,000 Tritanium. So we could close the market, and then we could say complete the mission. We have your Tritanium, and he's going to give us a new ship to fly. So we could go to ship fitting on our Merlin. We could take the miner off, drag it to our well. I guess we should be unfitting it like this. So we hover over the item we want to unfit, and then we just uh, click the unfit module. This seems to work 100% of the time. The other times it doesn't work all the time. And then we could just uh, throw the Gatling railgun on the Merlin, so he could be the combat ship, and then the Venture could be mostly the mining ship. I think we could just get drones on the Venture. So the Merlin's fully equipped again, we've got antimatter charges, we're gonna have to get some more antimatter charges. So maybe we could right click the antimatter and say view market details, and see if there's any uh, being sold in the station. Usually there is. Oh yeah, a whole bunch of them. 19 ISK. 
So let's just buy like um, 4,000 maybe. So 4,000 would cost like 75k ISK. We have uh, over 2 million, so that's not going to be a problem really. So we could just use projectile weapons for the first part. We'll keep the iron charges just in case uh, something comes in long range. Because if we look at the Gatling Railgun, the range is 6,450. It's like a 3,000 to 6,000. If we were to take off the ammunition, drag it to our inventory, and put the iron charges on the Gatling gun, the range will change to 11 kilometers to 14 kilometers. So the ammunition really makes a difference for the range with the projectile weapons. So basically, we're just going to use the antimatter charges and then we're just going to fly in and uh, be close combat I think just because they do more damage like they have a closer range you have to be closer to the enemy but the damage per second is 9.9 .9. I guess we could look at that too the iron charge damage is 4.1 damage per second so you can see the range increases but your damage also goes down but then it's also affected by your enemy's resistances, but I guess uh, antimatter charges would be the most damaging ones. So we could take the antimatter charges from our inventory and throw them into our ship's uh, inventory. So now we have a whole bunch of antimatter charges. We could right click, we could say stack all. Now it's a bit cleaner. So now we have all these ammunition types. Um, then we could uh, equip the venture. So we could go to ship hangar, we could double click the venture. Then we could uh, pilot the venture. So now we're in our new mining frigate. So this thing might be alright for mining. If you were trying to make a few things early in the game. So we could uh, equip it with the miner. So we could drag the miner onto the venture. And then we could drag the civilian gun or the neutron blaster. We could just go to our ship hangar, we could uh, go to our Ivis, because our Ivis had some guns on it. I don't think we're going to be using the Corvette anymore. We're not going to be using it too much, because the speed is a uh, 522. Our other ship goes faster and has more guns. So we could uh, right click on the Ivis, and we could say uh, strip fitting. So do you want to strip it? So it removes all of the modules from your ship. And then we go to the inventory, make sure there's nothing in the inventory. And then we could uh, double click the venture to start flying that. So then we could go to the item hangar. Now we should have some more guns again. The light electron blaster. Might as well just throw one gun on the venture so it has some way to defend himself. And then you have some antimatter charges in the inventory. And then I don't think we could put anything else on him. Oh, maybe just the civilian afterburner, I guess. So there we go, now the venture has uh, one miner and one gun. So now we could uh, complete the quest, the industry career path, that's what we're doing. So she wants you to make uh, one civilian afterburner. So if we hit the accept button, then we go to our inventory, then we go right click the civilian afterburner in our inventory, and we say use blueprint. Then she's gonna get us to make this item. So this is industry in the game, so this is basic industry. So now your blueprint is going to come up, so job runs one. I want to change it to two job runs. It's going to take nine minutes to make these, it's going to take 128 tritanium. So we can start this queue, job duration nine minutes. And then once the job is done, you'd come here and you'd hit the deliver button. So looks like we're building something there, so maybe we could do the business career path <clears throat> so business I think it was just delivery missions mostly transport these goods so you'd uh, right click here here's the drop-off location right click there set destination um, if the pickup location was here right so you'd hit the accept button then you would go to your inventory so here's the item he gave you he gave you the data sheets so you drag it into your ship hangar so we're just gonna use the venture for now <clears throat> so we set our destination there so we could undock from the station and then we would just have to click on this uh, over on the left hand side where it says route that's basically how you would jump through stargates and how you would uh, figure where you're going so you'd uh, 
you right click on the name, you'd say jump through Stargate. And then when you arrive at the other side of the station, you'd have to uh, right click on this uh, square and click dock. Because you wouldn't be able to jump through the warp gate. So I guess click on the square for two. Click on the square should be probably what I should be saying. You just click on the square to the farthest left and then you would jump through the stargate or dock, whichever option it was. So we just deliver this package, then we return back to the station. And then we'll probably just do some other things next episode. So basically say go through the career path, it'll help you do everything. And then uh, once you're done the career path, then we'll come back to the next episode after you're done the career path. Um, then what are a bunch of other things to do. So all I've really done was uh, sign up for memberships and then put the social skills on our tree and then just put uh, basically all shipped skills on our tree and then once we get uh, 2.5 million we can add some more. So your very first day you should basically just be training ships that's it just try to get to the big ships. Alright so we just got back at the station so your blueprint uh, you would go here here's how you would find it I guess. So if you wanted to watch the long play of all of these career agents, we basically did all these career agents already on the other playlist. The playlist is uh, Learn EVE Online, basically when we're uh, trying to relearn everything and teach everything and figure out uh, everything you could do in the first 10 days without uh, having to have high skills. Although this uh, series we're going to get a whole lot farther because we have uh, 1 million extra skill points actually. Plus we got a 50% discount on members, so we made out like a bandit on this series, so called Ari Cruiser, we're just training that, that's going to take uh, two days to train that, and then we're going to get the battle cruiser, and then we're just going to go rush up to the battleship, so we could go to the industry, oh, no, we have to collect that thing, so we just, uh, oh, the business career path, that's right, we completed the mission, we just came back, so he wants us to go find the remains, salvage the ship, and destroy the pirate rewards as a second venture. Alright, so we're just going to go through do the career agents. And then like I said, if you wanted to um, watch the playthrough of all of them to see exactly what you do in all these career agent things and all the early exploration and how we did it, you can do that. Next episode, we're just going to be at the point where... All of these career agents are basically giving us their 10th mission so we're just gonna turn them in and then uh, and then we're gonna start with what do you do after the career agents are done